It's the last day of September in the year 1999. It's backstage and offstage of the Dakota Barn Grill in St. Paul, Minneapolis. And James Kamek, uh, you've been working with Ahmad Jamal for over a decade, and it's been an adventure, hasn't it? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, just every musical uh, performance we have is uh, a continuous lesson on form, uh, support on my end and just it's it's caused me to understand a lot more about music and it's been a great experience the last 16 years james kamek is bassist with ahmed jamal and to know that he has uh, sustained during those uh, 16 years is really a testimony to his musicianship where did it all begin for you well uh I met Mr. Jamal through a friend of mine, a great friend of mine named Frank Richmond, uh, up in uh, the West Point area. I was in the West Point big band for about 10 years. I played acoustic bass and electric bass and that, and then I played with the Hellcats. <laughs> it's funny, I was uh, marching up and down a parade field there, and then I'd go and play some of the cadet dances and some of the functions for the generals and the officers. And then on the side, when I had great opportunities, I'd go out and play all kinds of great gigs in the mountains and sometimes in New York City. So anyway, um, I did a lot of gigs around the Hudson Valley area with a great friend of mine, Frank Richmond. And uh, somehow Frank uh, met a moth, I guess, through uh, Jack DeJanet. And uh, they got together and talked about music and passed music back and forth. And it was a great time for them. And then one day Ahmad came to uh, Frank and asked him, hey, do you know any bass players? And I need a bass player. And Frank said, here, check this out. And he popped a tape in. And it was a tape of Frank and I playing duo. And Ahmad liked it and said, send him up to my house. I'd like to hear him. Great. So my friend calls me and says, hey, I just got through talking to Ahmad Jamal. And you got an audition with him. And I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I hung the phone. I said, yeah. About 10 minutes later, Mr. Jamal calls me and gives me directions to his house. I said, I want you to come up next day. Sure enough, I got in the car and just drove up. I jumped out of my socks. And uh, we had a great time. You know, it was a great time meeting him and, and just getting a great opportunity to play with someone at this level. And uh, we had a great, great uh, understanding at that time. You know, it really played well. I, I enjoyed playing. I've always wanted to play like this this kind of a setting, uh, that kind of a challenge. You know, everything else is fun and it's, it's challenging, but this is the top of it. This is really, really uh, works your musicianship, you know, and it, and it, it makes you listen. It, it, it gives you a chance to really show how much you can listen and support and then stretch out at the same time. Anyway, um, Mr. Jamal and I, we uh, played I guess about four or five hours, you know, and we had some dinner, played a little more, and uh, he went back and got his schedule for me and said, well, I got this date and that date and that date. You can have them if you want them. And I jumped out of my socks again. <laughs> because it was a great experience. And this is all while I was still in the Army, and I said, sure. And my, so my first engagement with, was, was with, uh, with him at uh, Blue Note. And boy, what an experience. I met uh, Herlin Riley, a tremendous drummer, and uh, Iraj Lashkari. And boy, that week was like, it was the beginning of a great time for me in the music business, you know, a uh, great experience for me. And so that's where it really started. And since then, it's just been moving right along. James, I think you mentioned uh, briefly to me uh, off stage here that sometimes uh, when you're working with Ahmad Jamal, it's somewhat like driving almost on the left-hand side of the road. <laughs> yeah. Well, you just don't know what he's going to do to the music. I mean, you know the song, and you know the arrangements, but when you hit that stage, it's, it can be totally different. And sometimes we may not even play the songs that we've actually rehearsed, and we really don't rehearse that much. Uh, but um, he pulls songs up that him and I haven't done in maybe five to six years. So I have to go way back in the Wayback Machine and pull that stuff out of my, the back of my head. And, and it's, but it's fun. It's, I enjoy doing it. It's a tremendous, tremendous challenge. But, you know, I enjoy doing it because it really pushes me 
to be the the best I can be as a musician and really works my listening ability and support at the same time, you know, support what he's doing. It just always feels like a composition instead of a, just playing a song, you know, in solos, you know, it's always a complete compositional piece, you know, working with him. We out in the audience uh, sit and watch these uh, wonderful pieces of music fly by. <laughs> they uh, are uh, put together in a set uh, that is amazing. And what I, what I wonder about is, you know, the interplay. You know, you think about um, uh, working on an assembly line. Now, this is a, a rather raw comparison. Okay. <laughs> and so you have certain things that you have to do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you might describe a little bit about the leadership and the conducting and the uh, interplay uh, between and among you, from Ahmad to you at bass and then to the drums. Uh, well, that's difficult. It's, you know, I, I always take the position of listening, and I think that's the key. That's key right there. I mean, like I say, you know, we, I, I know the songs that he does, and most of them. I mean, sometimes he pulls one out that I haven't played, and <laughs> he challenges me with that. But each song is his own particular perspective, and, and he arranges it the way he wants. And it's a compositional, you know, uh, piece. Um, I always take a position of listening. I never try to... Uh, direct him or pull him along and do something or go aside from him. I'm always listening to where he's moving things and from that that's what comes out, out of my system. So, But I always think support first. That's the first thing. Support and just listen to what he does and groove as strong as we can groove. That's another important part of playing with Mr. Jamal. He wants a big groove. If you're not grooving like some of the great ones like Ray Brown he's going to get bugged. <laughs> So he wants he wants that big groove, that big sound, and I do all I can to try to get that for him. So whatever happens with these things in mind happens, and it's spon totally spontaneous. It's uh, on the fly. <laughs> I'm talking with James Kamek, bassist, who for the past 16 years has been at pulse and support and heart with Ama Jamal. Just a postscript or two, if you would, among the models, among bass players, uh, who uh, who has been uh, important in your uh, in your uh, concept and the use of the instrument? Um, well, at least three come to mind. Israel Crosby, first of all, because he played with Mr. Jamal, and the glue between us two was unbelievable. Glue meaning, um, or harmonically, they were together. Israel was right in there with him. Uh, rhythmically, they were right together, right there. Uh, uh, melodically, they were right together. Israel always picked the right notes to follow Mr. Jamal, and the time and rhythm was always there. So it was like a, a, a unified effort every time. So I used him as a as a uh, um, a model of getting a perspective of how to work with Mr. Jamal. Then I listened to people like Ray Brown and Milt Hinton. Those were two of my favorites because of the, 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 the strength they played with. You know, I always remember watching uh, uh, Milt Hinton with that big smile on his face and he would just pull the strings off of the bass and you felt every note cutting through your system. And it was like the foundation of that group. And Ray Brown the same way. He picked the greatest notes. He always had the, the greatest time. And those have been my motto. So it's Israel Crosby, Ray Brown, and Milton Hinton are my favorites. A fine night off stage here. The last day of September 30th, 1999. Oh, it's been fun. And it's just been great. Thanks so much uh, for sitting in and giving us um, a sense of what uh, the magic is that it propels you along with Ahmed Jabal. Well, thank you very much. Appreciate it.